Tiara Marie is a highly successful black American talent who nearly had the same level of success as Rihanna. Tiara Marie was on the path to becoming a huge pop star, just like her friend Rihanna. But things didn't quite work out that way. Despite having some success early on in her career, Tiara ultimately fell short of the superstardom she was chasing. This is a story of how one woman's dreams were dashed by heartbreak, disappointment, and ultimately abandonment. In this video, we will discuss the life and career of Tiara Marie, an artist who was on the verge of becoming successful, but experienced a setback that halted her progress. Some have speculated that Beyonce was involved in Marie's downfall. What is the truth behind this story? Stay tuned while we discuss what happened in this video. Tiara Marie was born in Detroit, Michigan on December 2nd, 1987. She is of African-American and Native American descent. Tiara Marie began singing at the age of 16 and recorded a demo with a local production company. This led to an audition in front of Island Def Jam Music Group chairman Antonio L.A. Reed. He was impressed by her vocals and signed her immediately. A year later, when Jay-Z became the president of Def Jam, Tiara was signed to Rockefeller Records. The other artist on the roster became her family. She even considered Jay a father figure. She was named Princess of the Rock and marketed as the urban Avril Lavigne. However, Tiara always wanted to be compared to Rihanna and was determined to make a name for herself. She achieved moderate success with her debut album, but her reality show on VH1 made her a household name. Marie's debut single, Make Her Feel Good, reached number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 9 on the R&B charts. The second single, No Daddy, had a video that led to commercial success on MTV. Shortly after, her third single, Phone Booth, was only sent to radio outlets and received a lukewarm response due to it not having a video and no promotion. She also made cameo appearances in various videos such as Biggie's Nasty Girl and Jay-Z's Show Me What You Get. She received a phone call from her label before her high school graduation to inform her that she was being dropped from her record label. Tiara Marie's first album, Rockefeller Presents, was released on August 2, 2005. It was produced by Brian Michael Cox, Dark Child, Cool and Dre, Blackout Movement, The Track Boys, and Kwame, and was co-executive produced by Sean Garrett. The album reached number five on the Billboard 200 Albums Chart and number two on the top R&B Hip Hop Albums Chart. In 2008, Tiara Marie signed a lucrative deal with Violator, but decided to split and land a new development deal with Faux Real. She was working on a new album titled At That Point with producers Rico Love, The Runners, The Underdogs, and more. Featured on the album were Nicki Minaj, Flo Rida, Pleasure P, Soulja Boy, Gucci Mane, Kanye West, and Rick Ross. The album was scheduled to release in the summer of 2010, but was eventually shelved. In 2009, Tiara Marie released her first mixtape, Don't Make Me Cause a Scene, hosted by DJ Papa Smurf. It features an official Cause a Scene remix, featuring rappers Flo Rida and Rick Ross. Tiara told Urban Mag she was shocked confused and didn't know what to do with her life. Tiara Marie decided to go into join acting to her music career. She appeared in The Magnificent Coolie T and 2010's Lottery Ticket, playing opposite Bow Wow. The cable network Up premiered her in The Dempsey Sisters with Lynn Whitfield, Denise Lawton, and Clifton Powell. On August 17, 2010, she released her second mixtape entitled Point of No Return. The mixtape contained leaked songs like I Know It's You, Coins, Find My Way Back, Holla, and a song intended for the album called Lights Go Down. She released four music videos for some of the songs she covered for the project. She released Sincerely Yours, a digital EP released via iTunes. It features songs made for At That Point that had not leaked, Emergency, Operator, and Might Get Lucky. She performed Body on The Monique Show. The Night Before Christmas features a Devil in a New Dress remix by Kanye West with Rick Ross and Mr. Vegas' ballroom reggae song, Boy Shorts. 
Tiara went into the studio with Rico Love in early March 2011 to work on new music for her album. A snippet of a song is heard in a clip of them recording the first single from the album, That's All Me, which features Rico Love. The song samples one of Diddy's early hits, and it's all about the Benjamins. Marie performed the new song for the first time at R&B Live in Hollywood. You Did That was later released as the new first single from Tiara's second album. It was written and produced by Rico Love and co-produced by D-Town. Marie said the single would go for radio ads sometime in January 2012. The song was later remixed featuring rapper 2 Chains, and the music video was shot. Tiara Marie dealt with a difficult hand early on in her life. Not long after she graduated from high school, her mother had a stroke, which left her unable to communicate. On top of that, it was reported that Tiara's mom had given birth to a baby, which led to stroke after childbirth. This caused a lot of strain in Tiara's family, and many of her co-stars, including Monique Slaughter, believed she was self-medicating to deal with the situation. 2011 was a busy year for Tiara Marie. Not only did she have a supporting role on season two of the VH1 hit reality show Love & Hip Hop New York, but she was also involved in a car accident in Beverly Hills. The accident led to charges of driving under the influence and assault on an officer after she allegedly became combative on the scene while this was undoubtedly a low point in her life. In 2014, Tiara Marie was asked to join the cast of Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. Her tumultuous relationship with Ray J was front and center on the show. Over the course of the series, viewers saw Tiara struggle with several personal issues. Tiara eventually agreed to enter a rehab facility and committed to maintaining her sobriety. Tiara Marie's public humiliation started when she took legal action against 50 Cent and her ex-boyfriend Akbar Abdul Ahad in May 2018, accusing them of releasing racy photos and videos without her permission. However, a judge dismissed the case in January 2019, with Tiara being ordered to pay 50 Cent's legal fees of just over $30,000. Tiara made it clear that she didn't have the means to pay this debt in a diss track entitled, I Ain't Got It. And as a result, her debt increased. In an effort to collect the $50,000 debt, 50 Cent's legal team questioned Tiara about her finances, to which she revealed her minimal income. According to Radar Online, Tiara Marie told 50 Cent's legal team that she barely has any income and is struggling to pay back a $50,000 debt. The former Def Jam singer revealed her financial situation during questioning in a debtor examination. 50 Cent has been trying to collect the debt from Marie, but her current circumstances make it difficult. A court filing from Tiara Marie's creditors claims she has virtually no assets and virtually no sources of income. The filing alleges that Marie has not had full-time employment since late 2019, instead relying on minimal income from sponsored Instagram posts. It is claimed that Marie is only interested in finding work in the entertainment industry and has moved to Georgia to live with a friend while she looks for opportunities. Tiara Marie is no stranger to money troubles. In 2019, she even joked about her inability to pay 50 Cent in a song called I Ain't Got It. Even though she's had trouble with money in the past, Tiara Marie works hard to get her finances in order. In the song, I Ain't Got It, she joked about not being able to pay 50 cents, but now she's agreed to a payment plan to help her get through. It's also worth noting that Marie has been embroiled in a number of personal controversies over the years, which may have contributed to her decline in popularity. In 2012, she was arrested for DUI. In 2014, she was involved in a highly publicized domestic violence incident with then-boyfriend Ray J. These incidents likely made many fans lose respect for Marie and made it difficult for her to recapture her earlier success. The life of Tiara Marie has been full of ups and downs, from being on the brink of superstardom to struggling with addiction and legal troubles. She has certainly had her share of challenges. However, Marie is working hard to get her life back on track. She has entered rehab and is committed to sobriety, and she is also working to pay off her debt to 50 Cent. While it remains to be seen whether Marie will be able to regain the level of success she once had, she seems to be on the right track.
Thanks for watching. I would appreciate it if you could like, share, and comment on the video. Also, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. See you next time.